Among the buildings of a medieval Benedictine priory such as Durham, the chapter house was second only to the church itself in importance. It was the place where the monks gathered daily to transact their business and to hear the reading of a chapter of their rule, hence its name. It comes as a surprise to many to discover that Durham's Romanesque style chapter house with its beautiful apsidal east end is not for the most part the 12th century original but in fact a replica completed only in 1895. By the end of the 18th century the original building had fallen into ruin and the then dean and chapter took the decision to demolish it replacing it with a much smaller functional room to suit their needs. A century or so elapsed and archaeological investigations had begun to revive interest in recovering the chapter house of the past. It was an interest keenly shared by the great Victorian biblical scholar Joseph Barber Lightfoot, Bishop of Durham from 1879 to 1889, who was especially enthused at the prospect of rediscovering the ancient stone chair which had been the historic seat of his predecessors at the head of the apse. Sadly, Lightfoot died before his hopes could be realised. But it didn't take long for Dean Charles Lake and his colleagues on the chapter to commit to the rebuilding of the chapter house as a fitting tribute to the much-loved bishop. In February 1891, they approved plans drawn up by their architect Charles Hodgson Fowler to reconstruct the original building, in addition incidentally to creating the Lightfoot Memorial which stands on the north side of the choir, also designed by Hodgson Fowler. The necessary funds were raised by public subscription with the result that the restored chapter house was formally opened at a gathering of the great and the good on the 13th of June 1895, when it fell to Lightfoot's successor as bishop, his lifelong friend Brookfoss Westcott, to reoccupy that ancient stone chair. The Lightfoot associations of the chapter house are to be seen today not only in the memorial inscription above the doorway in the north wall, but perhaps more strikingly in the design of the fabric shields deftly contrived to hide from view the apparatus of a modern sound system. These shields are proudly emblazoned with Bishop Lightfoot's coat of arms. 